suffering, suffering. Right now I'm almost completely detrained after having to take the whole of winter off the bike. Uh, yesterday I rode up Luzard Den going absolutely as hard as I could. Can I get up there 25 minutes faster after five months of training? Hello, welcome to the Pyrenees and episode one of my training vlog. Now the reason for doing this vlog is to share with you the training journey that I'm undertaking, uh, going from virtually zero where I am right now, having lost all of my fitness over winter, to hopefully back to full fitness and uh, what I consider my best sort of race weight. With that, I will add, there's absolutely zero judgment on weight here. I would really encourage everyone to, um, to, just, to think about their own weight in a very healthy way. The point of sharing all this is to hopefully help some of you reach your own goals. I'll be showing my training sessions and weight loss methods, the highs and lows along the way, and also my coach's feedback. So hopefully, whatever your current level, there'll be something useful to take away. I'll be working with Train Sharp Cycle Coaching. I've worked with Train Sharp for quite a number of years. They're an absolutely fantastic team. The reason I lost all my fitness over winter was because of a nasty bout of overtraining syndrome, coupled, I think, with possibly a bit of illness. That's in no way a reflection on Train Sharp because they didn't tell me to go and do a silly ride like a 300 kilometer, 9,000 meter roaming Everest that I decided I wanted to do in September. And it was that in combination with um, with some other riding and training that I think put myself over the edge um, and then uh, with some illness on top of that I ended up having to take five months off the bike that's where all my fitness went uh, for those of you who use um, things like today's plan or training peaks uh, my or simply the fitness score in Strava so my CTL went from uh, an all-time best of 101 to 1 uh, so literally it was all gone five months of zero riding um, and, and within that, I gained 12 kilos as well. Um, it happens extremely easily when you're in an overtrained state uh, because your, your, your body's in this sort of panic rebuild mode. Um, plus, when you're resting completely, you're just burning no calories. So you, you, know, you only need to eat about 1,700 a day when you're that sedentary. So, um, so the weight gain comes really easily without comfort eating. All right, so there was some cake and chocolate for a few weeks, but it was a dark time. I re resumed riding two weeks ago, a really steady rides around the valley, no climbing, nothing tough. It was just wake the body up, get some systems going. Cruising, super steady, no effort, just get used to being back on the bike. During that time, I've been, been pretty strict with myself about nutrition, so I've already lost two kilos of that. I was um, uh, 84.4 kilos at the start of this. And that's the most I've ever weighed. Uh, and I'm 185 centimeters, uh, six foot one. Right now I'm uh, at 82.4 kilos. That's a good start, a good down payment on what's to come. So the goal from this point is to lose 10 kilos and get back to my best fitness. Now I'm gonna be tracking my progress by using monthly tests. Now a handful of you may remember I did a training diary like this for Cyclist Magazine two years ago. And then I used Otakam, which happens to be that mountain right there. Um, I went out and did a, a baseline test before I did any training. And then every month there was another test to chart the progress. Um, it's a really good way of demonstrating the combined benefit of losing weight and gaining power. Now, you can express that as watts per kilo and you'll, you'll read that phrase in magazines, um, you'll hear that mentioned a great deal in race commentary. The thing is, who knows what one watt per kilo feels like on the road or what difference it makes to your time up a climb. That's why I'm gonna be testing myself every month up Luzada Den. It's a beautiful climb. It's long enough. It's 13 kilometers, averages seven and a half percent. And also it features in the Tour de France this year after a 10 year absence, it's back. And not only that, it's the final summit finish of the entire race. It's on stage 18. Massive GC day. Last chance for the climbers before the final TT. So onto the first mountain test. Yesterday I set out and rode up Luzada Den absolutely full gas to set my benchmark time for this project. I wanted to do an honest effort, give it everything I had. Um, so there's, yep, there's no sandbagging. You, you'll see there's no sandbagging. It really hurts. Um, and uh, I'll publish the, you know, the heart rate and the power data. I'll link the Strava ride so you can see all of that. Um, let's see how it went. All right, just warming up on the way to the climb. That's uh, Blue Zone of Death, up there. Climb wraps around the back of that mountain. So you can't see the top from here. But that's Gavany down there. Pic de Bonjour, awesome gravel climb. 
and up that way is uh, called the Tourmalet. Get a better view of that from the top. Tiny bit nervous. Here we go. Thirteen K. Five percent for the first K. Uh, similar for the second one, I think. It starts off quite easy. If you want to do a fast time, you've got to ride these bits fast. But so it's always about riding the power. Oh, I haven't gone far too fast. I can't do that much. Okay. Check in a bit. This ramp's 11% in headwind. So, 58 RPM in 34.28. Doing more power than I should be than high weights. Boxing. Nice for you though. That's 10 minutes in. Thirty minutes in. It's grippy. Pretty grippy. Thirty-four twenty-eight. It's a bit too big for where I am right now. Here we are. Seven K to go. So we're not halfway yet. Highway's now 166. I'm worried it went out too hard. Power average so far is 265. No, not sure I can hold that. But the highway's okay. Forty six minutes in. Hurting. Coming into the bowl at the end. Oh, look. So you can see the summit from here. Still four and a half k away. Twenty-five minutes or something. It's a bit cruel. Oh, Coming up to one k to go. Highway's 170. Alan, two missing. Suffering. Suffering. Give you a long corner. <sighs> Made it. 
haven't done an effort for six months. Look at this though. Oh, I'll show you some more of the view. Here's the view everyone comes for. And the photo that absolutely everyone takes. So, over there is Otakam. And then, through there, just on the horizon, that's called Tourmalet. So, let's see how it went. So, using the Strava segment, simply called Luzard Den, with asterisks either side of it. Um, my time up the climb was 1 hour 8 minutes and 31 seconds. I averaged 165 beats per minute and 260 watts. That power is well ahead of what I expected. Uh, yesterday's weight of 82.4 kilos, that pushed me at 3.1 watts per kilo. And that time was just over 20 minutes behind my PB of, of 48 minutes. So let's set an ambitious goal for this project. Can I get up Lizard Den 25 minutes faster than I did yesterday in an untrained state in five months of training? Let's add some detail to that goal too. Drop 10 kilos, gain 100 watts FTP, and reach the top 10 on Strava before the pros ruin it. Do you think I can do it? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We've got loads more great content from the Pyrenees on the way.